Today on Kingdom Buzz, I speak with Larry Willard. He is the founder of the largest non-denominational Christian publishing company in Canada. This brother, he's got some rich words for you. If you want to know what I'm talking about, though, you got to stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of Kingdom Buzz. I'm Naomi Tita. And I'm Sam Tita, and we have a great show for you today. We oh, spoke yeah. with a powerful man of God. I think Larry Willard is a gem uh, in, this, in this Canadian Christian context, and a lot of people just don't know about it yet. Oh, he's a blessing to us. I mean, the Faith Bookstore. I'm yes. sure you all know Faith Family Bookstore. Mm hmm What's that? On Macawan. On Macawan yes. in the Scarborough area. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, you probably already know the Faith Family Bookstore. If mm -hmm. you don't, you will be hearing about it very soon. It is huge, okay? Mm -hmm. It is huge. Probably one of the largest Christian bookstores in all of Canada. It's where things happen. Yes. I mean, Larry is a publisher, mm -hmm. and then there's the store. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes go there like you. Isn't that where you had your book launch? Yes, yeah. yes, that's where it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, 2011, I think it was, yeah. when my book was published. Mm -hmm. And Larry, by the way, is my publisher. He only publishes great writers, right? So he is my publisher. Are you insinuating <laughs> you're a great writer? I didn't say that. I only said he only publishes okay. great writers. But anyway, <laughs> uh, he is my publisher. Faith Family Books is an awesome place. Yeah. I mean, you go there on any given day. Oh, every time I go there, I always see someone I know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 great, nice cafe, mm -hmm. it's comfortable. Yeah. Listen, you don't go to Indigo or someplace else, you're not missing anything. You get okay? live entertainment there yes, also. Yes, yeah. so it's mm -hmm. a beautiful place. Uh, I can have great coffee there. Mm -hmm. And that's where we actually did the interview with Larry. So yeah. you will see it for yourself. It's a beautiful place mm -hmm. if you haven't been there yet. Be sure to come down there. There's so many gifts you can get there, mm -hmm. not only books. Yep. You have jewelry and some uh, clothing. He, he, calls, yeah. he calls it a, a, department, a department store, store. right? So it's, it's beautiful. But you know, we had a great time with Larry oh, yeah. and all the events they have happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, man, wonderful. And we're doing some great partnerships with them this year. Anyway, yeah. Nikki has events for us, right? Yeah. Well, take a look. We'll be back. Thank you, Sam and Naomi. Well, I have a lot of events for you today, as usual. Um, I was mentioning last week, March 17th in BC, Vancouver, Kim Walker is having her Still Believe tour. So you got to go there and catch it. It's just promoting her new um, solo album. And there'll be a guest worship leader along with her, Derek Johnson. And she'll be actually sharing before she's going into singing and all the stuff. So it's a night that you can encounter God along with passionate worship. On March 28th, another CD release, Worship Without Apology. Now this is brought to you by Pastor Richard Brown, who's not unfamiliar to many of you, I'm sure. And of course, um, O'Neill Watson is going to be there and it's going to be a whole load of awesome, awesome time in the Lord. So you want to be there and that is um, in March. Check out our website for more details, kingdombus.org. On March 28th to 30th, we have the Fresh Wind Youth Conference. Yoo-hoo! I'm going for that. I mean, you know, I'm not that young anymore, even though I look like it. But, you know, it's going to be an awesome time because we have great speakers like John Arnold is going to be there, Heidi Baker is going to be there, Fatin Grzeski is going to be there, along with awesome worship leaders like Jeremy Riddle and uh, William Matthews, as well as Sky Terminal, who coincidentally, most of you would probably know, they, um, they're Juno nominated and they actually won the GMA award. So you want to be there, um, get your tickets now. More information, once again, of course, on kbtickets.com too. And in April, we have April 6th is Trust 15. They're having a fundraiser. What's Trust 15, you may ask? It's actually a youth community support organization. And they work uh, with a lot of the youths in the community, as the name suggests. And they help empower these future generation of leaders and everything. So you want to be there to support their fundraising. We have more details for you in the next few episodes. April 11 to 13. Mission Fest Toronto. Once again, it's here. Mission Fest Toronto is going to be at Global Kingdom Ministry this year again. And there's going to be a lot of keynote speakers that you don't want to miss. Um, just to name a few, like Danny McKay, he's the guy who started the whole I Am Second um, campaign. You might want to check out that website because I love their videos and 
when he interviews some of these people, I'm like, I didn't know they were Christians and I didn't know how God changed their lives. And it's actually a really good campaign. So you might want to go check that out and as well go to Mission Fest to listen to what he has to say. And another great speaker is Reverend Paul Johnson, who is uh, one of the representatives for Open Doors Ministry. Uh, there will be going to be like kids events and seminars and workshops and jam pack for the whole weekend. So you want to be there April 11th to 13th. And let's go to the commercial break and we'll be right back. My name is Danny Mackay and I work with I Am Second. I remember as a 17 year old feeling very desperate and not only did I feel unloved, I felt unlovable. And I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and was at a very low time in my life. And at a very dark time, very desperate time, I stole a car at three o'clock in the morning and ran away from home. And in the back of that car, I got a hold of a book that two days later led me to Jesus Christ. And I want to invite you this year to Mission Fest 2013 on Saturday, April 13th from 1 to 3 o'clock at Global Kingdom Ministries. I want to share with you how God loves to use broken people with a broken past to accomplish His purposes in this world today. For more information, check out www.missionfest.org. You know, Naomi, I want to, something on my heart I want to talk to you about today uh, in our audience. It's about faith in action. But, you know, faith in action could mean two things. It could mm -hmm. mean living out your faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, probably even that too. But this is, especially when God has put something, a vision on your heart, yeah. whether it's in, in, in the form of, uh, of writing a book or doing a music CD or even preaching or even just going out to help the, you know, the poor ministry in the prisons, whatever it is. Even okay. like what we're doing now, yes. Kingdom Buzz. This mm -hmm. was faith in action. It was yes. something that birthed from you mm -hmm. and we're, we ran with it. And, and you mm -hmm. know, it's, 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 it's scary sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's honestly, you, 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 on, until you obey and go ahead with it, mm -hmm. it becomes something that may never have happened. And sometimes mm -hmm. it never happens. Mm -hmm. Larry Willard, you know, we're, we're talking about this because of what Larry does. I mean, this man, he publishes great writers, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, only great writers, by the way. And he uh, is my yeah, publisher, probably, right? So are you a great writer? <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said he publishes great writers. <laughs> but, um, you know, what he does is he takes what people... Uh, God in, puts in the hearts of people mm -hmm. and he puts it into print and blesses the body of Christ with Amen. it, you see. Yeah. And and I've used this many, many times, even on the show, Pastor Johan's book, mm -hmm. the, the Promise. A little book this man of God wrote in Sri Lanka on Holy Spirit that ended up in the hands of a church in southern parts of Africa yeah. uh, as their curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now, this was a surprise. One day he gets a phone call and they call him and they say, you know what, we want to use your book for our curriculum. And he said, yes, but guess what? If he had not been obedient and put this thing out there, mm -hmm. it would never have happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, to encourage you. And uh, we're, Nicole is actually spotlighting some, some of these kinds of projects that God yeah. put on people's hearts, mm -hmm. right? So but why don't we go there, uh, let the, uh, Nicole do her thing in the spotlight, and then we'll be back. Oh, welcome to Spotlight. My name is Nicole, and today I am excited. I'm telling you, we are really excited. My favorite book is A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, and it's by the late W. Philip Keller, who was born in East Africa and was a shepherd and also a scientist. And what he's able to do with this book is that he's able to explain each phrase of the psalm chapter by chapter and relate it back to being a shepherd and how the Lord sees you. Um, when you say that, you know, he's a shepherd and you're the sheep and we are so alike as sheep, um, you'd be amazed. I would advise you to pick up the copy of this book today. Um, you will be so blessed. You will be so edified and you will gain such great understanding of what this Psalm really means. And when the Lord says he will never leave you or forsake you and he is your shepherd and you shall not want. There's so many nuggets in this book. I could go on and on about it but Nikki my producer won't give me enough time to do it so I'm gonna have to stop here and you're gonna have to pick up your copy today um, my other thing is Vicky Yohi Vicky Yohi is one of my favorite artists and um, 
This album, I think, was released back in 2009, and it has some of her greatest songs on here. So I would advise you to pick up your copy of Vicky Yohi's uh, CD today, I Just Want You. And um, it is a best, it's a bestseller on the market. As you know, we're spotlighting entrepreneurs in the marketplace. And I want to feature David Spencer Inspired Fun Photos. It's DS Inspired. This young man was a, a designer and turned a photographer, and now he's shaping the world of photography through a great lens. So I'd advise you to go to our website, www.kingdombuzz.org, and find out more about the individuals we're spotlighting today, the books, the artists, and the entrepreneurs. And see you next time in the spotlight. Thank you, Nicole. Now, Larry Willard, you know, after you had that conversation with him, mm -hmm. I thought, my, oh my, I have to travel to Europe. I need to get to Greece because I just need to submerge myself in the language. <laughs> well, you know. The, you the, think we can go there next year and spend a year? I don't know about that. You know, how are we going to do Kingdom Bus? Well, you know what? We could do Kingdom Bus from anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, no, Larry, the man, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a serious guy. Like, I personally think, you know, he's, he's a gem mm -hmm. in, in the, just in the whole Christian community mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that a lot of the things that um, books, great books yeah. that he's published, I mean, mm -hmm. so many of them. Mm -hmm. The man has so much experience in, in, in marketing. Recently, yeah. at mm -hmm. Global Kingdom Ministries, remember when they did the, uh, the super business? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was brought in mm -hmm. to speak, uh, to give a lecture on marketing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't just publish the books. Mm -hmm. uh, he helps Christian entrepreneurs Market. with, with marketing mm -hmm. their businesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, the brother is a Greek scholar, okay? Mm -hmm. Greek scholar. So, um, and, and you know, when we spoke about that, he, he, he talked about when, and this is why you're probably asking why, you know, if we can go to Greece. Yeah. It's, it's just something when you can study the manuscripts, you mm -hmm. know, and see for yourself yeah. uh, exactly what the Word of God is saying. So, yeah, I, I mean, I love that. Yeah. Um, he's a painter too. Oh, yes. Yes, not just a painter. Yeah. He's an artistic painter, so not like painting homes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh well, there you go. Yes, not like a brush. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. He is a, a painter as an artist. Uh, he he does amazing watercolor uh, paintings mm -hmm. of. Um, uh, it has like a, a nautical more, theme, yeah, theme more, right? More like yeah, marine. Marine, kind of. right, yes. right. Oh, I'm talking about marine. <laughs> His, His wife <laughs> is called Marina. Marina, yes, yes. a good, beautiful good. woman. Who knows 11 languages. Yes. Wow. You know what Larry said? He said, you know, you should come to our house when we're having dinner. And, and you know, I, I can just see that being very interesting. Mm -hmm. But Larry, he, he, the reason he paints a lot of nautical themes is because, they, I mean, I think he sold his boat, but the man had a, they had a beautiful yeah. boat. You know? Yeah, I remember he was living right next to the water. Yes, out there in Pickering, by the marina. By the marina, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, this is I know this is there. Yeah. I know it, it sounds kind of like we're making this up, but yeah. no. Mm -hmm. uh, his wife, yes, is called Marina, mm -hmm. and he also they used to live. They had a beautiful home by the marina where mm -hmm. they had their boat. Yeah. they've since moved away, but mm -hmm. he's a very good friend of ours and uh, my publisher, um, just a man of God, and and I think there's a lot that we can learn yes, from, from a person yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, it was, it was a fun time we had at their bookstore and mm -hmm. uh, there's just so much going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. We're doing a partnership with them in yeah. the next, in this new mm -hmm. season. Um, I know. We'll let you know more <laughs> about that. We'll, we'll let that. you know yeah. more about mm -hmm. that. Nicole, we have to keep her from, from, from their store. Oh Faith yeah. Family Books. She's trying to consume <laughs> all the books. Every time she goes in there, Nicole, says, whom you know, <laughs> I'm going to buy something again. <laughs> and the last time we went, yes, she bought some stuff. Okay. Yeah, so I it's at least two books and a magazine. Yeah. 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 Anyway, mm -hmm. I think one of them, she, she spot, she, she spotlighted. Mm -hmm. And if she didn't buy it this time, she bought it from yeah. before. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, uh, we had a wonderful yeah. time there. We're going to have to buy her a house just to put those books. Those books. Well, yeah. you know what? She's a lover of books <laughs> and she showcases them. Yeah. Anyhow, we, we have the great interview with uh, Larry Willard. I know you will enjoy it. So take a look and we will be back. My guest today is Larry N. Willard. Larry is a very good friend of ours and also president, co-founder, co-owner of, uh, of the Faith Family Books and Gifts, which is where we're filming this interview tonight. Owner and publisher of Castle Key Books and also... Bayridge Books combined their Canada's largest non-denominational publishing company 
uh, former executive director of, um, and general manager of Augsburg Fortress Publishing. And he's been nine years, or he was nine years, with Tyndale University College and Seminary as, various, uh, as vice president in various roles and departments. Well, Larry, welcome to the show. Sam, it's so good to be here. Well, listen, your, your resume is so long, it yes. took three takes just to get it on the show. Now, you have a very rich background, Larry, okay? Um, my first question to you is, you could have done anything, and there's part of your resume or your background, your bio that's not mentioned in here, many, many years at Xerox and, 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 and Apple computers. Mm -hmm. yes. Why did you get into publishing? You know, it started out, Sam, where I had, um, I had an interest in publishing because I used to work also, it's not on there, but with Evangelical Fellowship of Canada mm -hmm. and helped to uh, restructure their magazine called Faith Today. Okay. So the current, the current Faith Today is the one that uh, myself and a team put together uh, uh, to kind of become the Christian Maclean's of Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, during that time, I got uh, uh, kind of brought over by the publishing company called Augsburg Fortress Publishers. And uh, I started running their entire Canadian operation as the general manager. Now, what happened was Canadian uh, authors would come to me and they would have these wonderful books that had a touch too much Canadian content uh, for the likings of the editors in the United States. Okay. I'd read the book and I would go, this is a great book. We, we have to publish this. I would send it down, they'd send it back and say, too Canadian. Well, I did that a few times and I said to them finally one day at one of our uh, big meetings down there, I said, I would like to start, if you don't mind, an imprint for Canadian authors. Uh, and of course they looked at me, I think they thought I was probably going to sell, what, a hundred copies or something for each author. We pulled together a, our very first three or four authors, created the Castle Key imprint, which I later bought from them when I left the company. Okay. Uh, and um, I, just, I just felt that it was very important to give a platform for great Canadian authors uh, and to make sure that we didn't get what, we, what happens in most U.S. publishing companies, which is they extract all the Canadian content, the Canadian identity, and so on. But I wanted to retain it because I felt it was really important that we spoke to the Canadian audience and we reach Canadians with, with our own unique identity, which often Americans don't recognize. Mm -hmm. I've seen the impact of technology on, on this whole publishing industry. How would you say the book publishing industry has changed or evolved over the last, say, 15, 20 years and all the time you've been in book publishing? Well, there's no question. It has totally changed. Uh, there was a time when royalty publishers, there's two type of publishers, there's self-publishing, which used to be called Vanity Press and royalty publishing. Um, we've now had a blurring of the lines of dis distinction between books that are produced for royalty and for self-publishing. Mm -hmm. And they're very combined now. But that's just the book content. Not only that, we've changed the distribution channels. We have seen a full transition in the last 15 years so that there are, are um, still all the books are published as, as hard copy books. Mm -hmm. But now, rather than having the giant warehouse, what do we do? We create e-books, electronic books that are downloadable by all the well-known distributors, whether it's Kindle at Amazon or iBooks with Apple and so on. That is one of the uh, places where there's really been significant change. People re reading books electronically. Um, a second one is a lot of books now are done print on demand. Our books now are available in uh, 29 countries of the world. But I don't have to have those books shipped out by case right. to wherever it is, England and Australia and Be Belgium or Africa and so on. Now what they do is we send them the files and they're managed by our print on demand service house. We now, we used to take a year to two years to get a book to market. Now we can get a book to market in eight to 10 weeks, if we want it. Mm -hmm. So the, the world has changed. Most of our books now are purchased, to be honest with you, online. Um, bookstores, which are what we call the trade, uh, the trade business, actually makes up, at one point it was 90% and 10% was everything else. Now it's about 50-50. Wow. So a lot of my sales are eBooks and or print on demand or online, uh, online purchases. And of course that hurts bookstores like our own, so we've had to be reinvent ourselves, right. otherwise we would die. But as a publisher, uh, the margins have been reduced, the complexity has increased, 
And so it's an entirely different business. And if you are not keeping pace with the way people buy books and read books, you will be eliminated in no time. Wow, and, and so Faith Family Bookstores, mm -hmm. okay, is, is this the largest Christian bookstore? I, I know certainly in, in Toronto, as far as I know. I, I believe. Or, or certainly uh, one of the largest, I would think. It's, it's the largest one in Ontario. It's okay. the largest one uh, with the exception of two, which are out west. Okay. So we are the third largest bookstore. Uh, uh, you know, we call ourselves now a Christian department store. Right. But we're the third <laughs> largest uh, in Canada. Right. Now, let me read you from uh, 2 uh, Timothy 2.15, the, the New King James Version. Sure. Be diligent to present yourself approved of God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, do you see it possible at all that we can rightly divide the word of truth without studying the word of God? Those are really good questions and I think that anyone who calls himself a Christian should be admonished by scripture that commands uh, us to understand and know what it is that we're believing. Uh, there is no such thing. I mean, it's very good. We, we accept the truth of scripture by faith, but we know that the Holy Spirit works in us that's how we get that faith. That's how that faith matures. The sanctification process is not just our lifestyle. It is not just the things we do, but it's also our thinking and understanding because the depths of the knowledge of who God is, as Paul says, are om almost infinite. The, the more you learn about scripture, the more you realize how it applies in other areas and the more capable you become at um, handling people who have objections. Right. So, now I'm one who believes that you should study to show yourself approved, as Paul says in Timothy, and that um, that whole approval process um, is, has got depths that just keep going. And, and after a while, you know, you start digging into the Word and you realize how deep this is and how significant it is and you realize who God is and sometimes it's overwhelming. Yes. And I think a person should, should spend as much time as they can and yet, I'm not saying if someone doesn't have their, uh, you, you know, their doctorate program or their master's or their BA in theology. Right. Uh, I know some wonderful old ladies in our church who basically just have read that Bible so often the thing is so worn out. Mm -hmm. uh, they know every scripture where it is and they can tell you what it all means. Mm -hmm because the Holy Spirit ultimately is the teacher of that's truth. Right. So yeah, the, the better you study, the more you study, the better it is. And that's why we produce books, because we, that's in the back of our mm -hmm. heart. We want people to be able to go somewhere mm -hmm. and discover there's a new depth they had missed. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in one way, uh, edify themselves, be fed, and understand the depths of the knowledge of Christ. What Larry's yeah. saying is, uh, if I understand you correctly, is, you know, yes, go ahead, study, I would even say enroll in Bible college, even if you didn't, you, you had no plans to become a pastor, um, just, just to learn because it's that important, isn't it? Yes. Well, Sam, you know, I, I have my master's degree. Mm -hmm. I have a, a, a master's degree from seminary and um, it's a three-year degree with languages. Uh, and people have asked me, did I plan to be a pastor? And I said, I never planned to be a pastor. I just wanted to know the truth. That's it. We are all truth seekers, seekers. Yes. and I did not want to hear it secondhand. Mm -hmm. um, do I use it all the time? No, not every day, but the amount of times I use it is hundreds, it's thousands, it's every time I have a discussion with someone. Uh, and so the answer is y yes, people should do it, not because they plan to be pastors or, or anything else. They should do it so that they are, as Paul suggests, they properly know how to handle the word of truth. Otherwise, we mishandle it, and uh, we may be preaching heresy, yes. and you know, that's kind of like adding to or taking away from Scripture. So uh, that would make me nervous all by itself. Now, I'm enrolled in Bible school, and I don't think uh, I've been called to be a pastor. Larry, thank yeah. you so much for coming. Sam, it was show. good to be here. Thanks for coming to our store, and thanks to everyone who's listening. You know, I enjoy doing a show especially like this, you know. Um, everything we do at Kingdom Bus, I find very exciting. It's exhilarating. That's why we do it. But when we do uh, a show that uh, encourages the body of Christ, encourages people of God to do the things that God has put on their hearts, 
I love what Larry Willard does, and it's got to be very fulfilling. You see it in his eyes when you, when you meet him and, and speak with him. To be able to take what God has put in people's hearts and to put it in print in a way that propagates the gospel, takes it out to the four corners of the world to edify the body of Christ and to teach people about the kingdom of God. I find that nothing can be more rewarding in life. You know, one of the things that I find, you know, I've done television for years. I speak, I teach, I meet people a lot. One of the things that I find a lot of people do is they say, well, you know, uh, some time ago it was prophesied over my life to do this. Uh, there's this project that God has placed on my heart. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to wait till I, I, I finish school. I'm going to wait for this or that. No, 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 no. You are ready to do it right now. Uh, you, you, you have it in you. God is not waiting for you to do anything more than you already are. You are ready. You are equipped. If you would but obey. Let me tell you something, just, just to encourage you. When we started this project of Kingdom Buzz, I got to tell you, several times we were supposed to get started, and this spirit of fear grabbed me. And, and I was thinking, my goodness, this stuff is expensive. How are you going to keep it going? But you know, when, um, when the Lord said to Joshua that I have given you Jericho, what you need to do now is to go and take it. And he gave Joshua a plan that sounded insane. You're not going to go fight your enemy with, with swords and daggers and, and arrows. No. He said when you get down there, you see, if you go back and read the book of Joshua, you will see what I'm talking about. But this is what I want to get to you at. When Joshua and the priests were going over now to take Jericho, there was some big obstacle and it was called the Jordan. The Jordan is a huge river. They had to go through it. And, and, and so uh, God said, let the priests go ahead. Now, God didn't do like he did with Moses, where Moses, uh, you know, put his staff in the water and, 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 the, and, and the sea parted. No, God said to, to, to Joshua, let the priests go ahead. And you know what happened? The Jordan was staring at them, did not move, nothing changed until the priests stepped, their feet touched water. That was when the Jordan parted and they went into Jericho. And even the plan that God gave them to conquer Jericho, it was very unconventional, if that's even a word that describes it. It was crazy by human standards. Walk around the walls of this great, inconquerable city and just speak and sing songs and blow trumpets. That's how they took down Jericho. So what I want to say to you today is there is something God has placed on your heart a call to ministry, a book to write, a CD to launch, and you're sitting there thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm not ready yet. No, you are ready. If you don't think you are, give me a call. Give Sam Teter a call. Let me give you a word of encouragement because if I was waiting for a qualification to do the things that God has called me to do, my brother, my sister, it wouldn't have happened. So take it from someone who has walked the walk. God has called you and he has equipped you. You are ready to do what he's called you to do. God bless you, and we will see you next time on Kingdom Bus.